Here we're going to talk about the five symmetry elements of point groups. They are the um, identity operator, inversion, rotation, reflection, and a combination in uh, rotation and reflection. First, let's talk about generally uh, what we mean by the symmetry elements. We're going to introduce a concept later on of an operator, a symmetry operator. Uh, so typically what you do is you have some sort of structure here. Uh, say that's a structure and this is uh, before and then you apply some symmetry element or as we'll find out later a symmetry operation and we'll have something after and if what you have after is the has the same configuration of atoms in space as it did before then you would say that has a particular symmetry uh, operation or symmetry element let's see what we mean by that let's talk about the identity symmetry element that's given the symbol e uh, the identity symbol uh, symmetry element means in this framework you don't do anything <laughs> so before and after are exactly the same there's no rotation no reflection, no inversion, or anything else. So therefore, all objects, all molecules, anything you can draw has an identity symmetry element. Because if you take that element and don't do anything for to it and compare the element with the element, it's the same. So all objects have an identity symmetry element. Now, let's go to the next one. Uh, this is inversion point of symmetry. So here we're talking about a, a point. Uh, let's uh, talk about, um, for instance, a square, and that will illustrate what we mean by inversion center. So here is a, well, let me try to draw a little better square than this. Okay, here's a square. There we go, up, across, uh, there we go. Now, a square has a center of inversion, and here it is, right here. If you take any point in the structure, say this corner, and go toward the center, and then keep going the same distance in the same direction, you'll get something like this and this point will go through the center inversion keep going in the same direction same distance there uh, this point go through the center inversion you get that point up here and so on uh, any point here let's take this one go there you invert it here take this one go here you invert it there you'll see if you invert all these points in a square you'll get the square back again so therefore a square has an inversion symmetry element and an inversion is a point and note that the point the inversion center the inversion point does not have to be anywhere on the structure so if this represents a molecule um, then um, the inversion center is not uh, a particular atom in the molecule all right how about a rectangle does a rectangle have a center of inversion well just let's see let's draw a rectangle here's a rectangle and of the center of inversion will probably be right there in the center so you take this point go across go all the way down yeah and that point will be inverted up here there's the inversion center same way with this and all the other points so the answer is yes a rectangle does have a center of inversion how about um, a uh, octahedron okay well an octahedron looks something like this There, and these are the sides of the octahedron. Uh, let's take, say, a point here. If the center of inversion would be right at the center of the molecule, yeah, it goes through there and down here, yeah. How about this one? Yeah. That's inverted over there, inverted over here. Yeah, so it looks like the octahedron, octahedral structure, has a center of inversion. It's right there in the center of the octahedron. So yes, it does. How about uh, the human body? Okay, well, let's draw human body so these are our feet these are our hands and this is our head well where would the uh, center be well uh, right here in the center hmm in that case the feet will be up here that would be down there so you would have a different structure if you uh, had say this is a center of inversion so no uh, the human body does not have a center of inversion if it did then uh, we look kind of strange I would think so the answer is no all right so there's the inversion symmetry element and if you take a structure and invert um, and if it has an inversion center what you'll get is the um, and you get the same structure back again 
uh, then you um, it has an inversion center. All right, next one. So we went to a point. That's a point of symmetry. We're now going to lines, rotational symmetry element. All right, what does that mean? That means that you have a line and you're rotating about the line. So here's the line. And what we're going to do is rotate about this line. Clearly, if you rotate at 360 degrees, uh, you'll have uh, the exact same structure you had before. So really, it's a rotation of less than 360 degrees. All right, let's uh, look for some examples. Let's look at an equilateral triangle. All right, so let's look at an equilateral triangle. Okay, all right, well, let's look at this line here. Let's rotate about this line, so this will go over there, and that will go under there. You see, if you rotate this by 180 degrees, rotate around this way by 180 degrees, just flip this over, you'll have the same structure back again. You start with this one, you flip it over, you end up with that same structure. So this is 180 degrees, and <clears throat> what one does to denote that kind of rotational axis is to take 360 degrees and divide by the number of degrees that you rotate in order to get the same structure back again. That'd be 180, so that's a 2. <clears throat> so you call this a C2 axis, meaning you have to rotate it through 180 degrees to get uh, the same structure, and another 180 degrees back to 360, you get the original structure. So an equilateral triangle has a C2 rotational axis, and here's another one. See if you rotate about this axis, and here's a third one. So um, this has a 1, 2, 3, twofold or C2 rotational axes. And then, if you look at an axis here that comes right out towards you and right back, if you rotate around this axis for 120 degrees, so this will go 120 degrees, that will go 120 degrees, you'll get the same structure again. So this axis that's now perpendicular to the plane here, coming right out at towards you and away from you, a C3 axis. So it looks like an equilateral triangle has four symmetry uh, axes, rotational symmetry axes. It has three C2 axes and one C3 axis. Okay. How about a square? Well, yeah, we could probably see that. Okay, so let's look at the square. We'll start with this square here. All right, and now we're looking for rotational symmetry axes. Well, clearly, this is a rotational symmetry axis, and maybe you could see that. That's a C2 axis, and there's one along here. This is also a C2 axis. There's also some others here. Oh, look at this. If you rotate this 180 degrees, you'll flip it, so this is also a C2 axis, and here's another one up here, C2 axis, because if you rotate this 180 degrees, you start with this, rotate 100 degrees, you get it back again, so that is a C2 axis. So it has one, two, three, four C2 axes. Okay, so it has uh, C2 axes. How about this fourfold axis here? Well, yes, now we're gonna draw the square again. Here's the square. And there's the axis coming out towards you. If you rotate this 90 degrees, you'll get the same structure. So this goes 90 degrees, that'll go there, that'll go there, that'll go there, and that'll go there. You get the same structure take uh, the structure and rotate another 90 degrees, another 90 degrees and under degrees to all the way up 360. So uh, 360 divided by 90 is 4, so this is a C4 rotational symmetry axis. Okay, so it's a four-fold C4 rotational symmetry axis. How about a rectangle? All right, let's draw a rectangle. This is my rectangle here. All right, looks like this has a C2 axis here, because if you rotate this by 180 degrees, you'll get it back again. Start with that, and let's do um, a rotation about 180 degrees. Yeah, this will flip that way, and that'll flip that way. So it looks like it's, um, and you have two, uh, twofold or C2 symmetry rotation, rotational axes. Uh, do we have the one that we had in the square again? No, because if we rotate a rectangle about this uh, axis here, say 180 degrees, we won't get the same structure back again. 
So this is not an axis. So in fact, we just have a C2 rotational, uh, two C2 instead of four C2 rotational axes. How about this one right here? Now it's coming out towards you. You see, if you rotate this 180 degrees, you'll get the same structure back again. So this actually is a C2 rotational axis. Whereas this one here for a square was C4, this one, because a rectangle, you have to rotate it 180 degrees in order to get the same structure back. So a rectangle then has uh, three C2 axes. All right, so that's rotational symmetry element. All right, so we did the point, that's an inversion. We did the line, which is rotational symmetry. And now we're going to do a plane, plane symmetry. And there we're going to have um, four reflection planes. Um, now for this, it's a little uh, difficult to see without three dimensions. Um, and so uh, let's actually try to do it anyway. So let's look at the equilateral triangle. All right, so here's an equilateral triangle. All right, so now what we're looking for is a plane, which then we reflect through the plane. So here, imagine this is a plane. So this is a plane that's perpendicular to the plane of the screen here. And you see, if you take a point here, go through a perpendicular to the plane and then go all the way to the other side the same distance you went to the plane you'll get the same thing yeah this goes to this yeah that goes to that so you just go perpendicular to the plane a direction a certain distance and then keep going past the plane the same distance you get something over here it's the same as there the whole thing is reflected um, yes that's a plane of symmetry reflection plane of symmetry and maybe you can see this is another plane these are not just lines these are planes coming out towards you if we reflect that yeah and here's another plane so it looks like the ammonia uh, the not ammonia but the tr equilateral triangle has one two three planes of symmetry uh, three reflection they're called reflection planes Ah, but we do we see another one the answer is yes in the plane of the uh, triangle there is a reflection plane so that's the plane of this screen and you see you take the equilateral triangle and you reflect it well it's lying right in the plane but if you reflect it goes zero distance and it goes zero distance on the other side of the plane yeah you get it back again so there is a plane of reflection right here in the board or right here on the screen um, so that's one, two, three, four symmetry planes, or four uh, reflection planes. And then if you look at a cube, that has lots of reflection planes. Let's uh, try to draw a cube here. There we go. So we can have a reflection plane here, reflection plane here, reflection plane here, reflection plane there, reflection plane there, and so on. So it has lots of uh, reflection planes. And then finally, uh, we have a combination of a rotation and then a reflection. And the staggered conformation of ethane has an S6 axis. And we'll illustrate that actually um, a little difficult to do in the two dimensions of this uh, video screen here. So we'll try to do that in class. And also, um, there are a lot of things online that you can look at and some are better than others. What I've done is taken this particular website, which I think was uh, fairly good at explaining these symmetry elements. All right, so let's look at these symmetry elements maybe in 3D. All right, so here we go. This is um, Oterbian, or however you pronounce that, small liberal arts college in Ohio, outside of Columbus. Okay, so let's uh, take a look here. Uh, let's look at the identity. Well, that's not, you don't really need to uh, say much about uh, identity here because if you just take uh, a molecule and yeah, here's a funny looking molecule um, but any molecule in particular this one has an identity so identity is uh, no big deal identity operation you just do nothing all right now let's go to uh, inversion that point of symmetry this is um, well, I don't know it could be anything but uh, let's call it tetrachloroplatinate because okay, so there's platinum and then there's four chlorine atoms around there and that looks like that's in a plane. There is an inversion center and this is where the inversion center is. See? 
So you, those yellow things, you're going through the inversion center, you're going through here, and then going out here, same way with all of them. One more time, there it is, inversion center. You start with this, you invert, and you end up with the same thing. So therefore, there's an inversion center. And then you could, uh, the um, this website, if you want to play with it yourself, is, is listed here. Uh, let's look at um, ethane, staggered confirmation of ethane. All right, so there it is, ethane. Is there an inversion center? The answer is yes. And let's see if we can get that to invert. There we go. See, it inverted. <laughs> That's kind of cool. So this one goes through that inversion center and ends up down here. This one goes through the inversion center and ends down there. So there it is. Ethane has, in staggered confirmation, has an inversion center. There we go. All right, let's go to the um, the plane. That was a reflection plane. All right, here's the ammonia molecule. Uh, we're looking for reflection planes. Here's a reflection plane here. All right, and let's... Uh, see how that, so we'll put it right there coming out towards you. We'll see how that reflects. Here we go. Now maybe we'll turn around this way so we can see it better. Reflect through that plane. See, So that one is goes through here. Same distance on the other side of the plane. That goes to that one and this one goes up to this one. And these of course are right in the plane so when you reflect them you get the same molecules. Nothing moved here. So there it is. That's kind of cool. One more time. There it is. <clears throat> now let's look at the um, another plane. That's the, another plane, and here's the reflection through that plane. You start with there, you reflect, you get the same thing. So that's a reflection plane. Now uh, let's go to, um, so we did the um, plane. I guess we did a little out of sequence. Uh, let's look at rotation. So this looks like a water molecule. And what we're going to do is to look at the C2 rotational axis. So there it is, the C2 rotational axis. We're going to rotate. See, we start there, we rotate 180 degrees, we get the same structure back again. So that is a C2 rotational axis. The two comes from 360 divided by the rotation of 180. All right, so those are the uh, four that we uh, talked about. The identity is nothing. The inversion is through a point. The rotation is through a line. And the reflection is a plane. Now we're going to look at a combination of uh, reflection and rotation. And that's called improper rotation. I don't know why it's called improper rotation, but uh, it's just a combination. Here is the staggered form of ethane. Okay. And we're going to look at, um, okay, so this is the rotational axis here, and this is the, rota uh, the reflection plane here. So improper rotation is a combination of ref rotation and then a reflection. So let's just do that. There's the rotation, and there's the reflection. A C6 means you're rotating through 360 divided by 6, or 60 degrees. So here we rotate through C360 degrees, and then we reflect. And we start with this structure, we rotate, reflect, we get the same structure back again. So that's a S6 rotation axis. S is a symbol used to denote improper rotation. And um, the reflection, I guess we didn't mention that in the lecture part, but the reflection uh, is denoted by the Greek letter lowercase sigma reflection planes. All right, so maybe you can go to the site if you want to play around with it some more, um, and I'll bring some models into class and give some 3D pictures and so on. So what you have to know is what these five symmetry elements are and how to apply them to a particular molecule.